Well, you've clicked onto the stream and you're wondering, how does Polaris drop in altitude angle and not physically? Because when we take an angular measurement and we take it, let's say, at 50 degrees, it shows it at 50 degrees. And if you take something at 80 degrees, it shows it 80 degrees. So obviously, the altitude angle differs from each other. Well, sit back and join me. So I created a presentation so I can try and explain it to you in a much more detailed and simplistic way. I even did some color coding that hopefully even the people that struggle like Sean Hawkins and the rest of his troll army. Let's see if you'll be able to understand what's going on now. Let's just start off with the basics. You first have to know that we have a 180 degree line to be the horizontal 180 degree baseline you would have polaris in this reference which would be 90 degrees from mike mike is standing here looking overhead which means mike and polaris is at the same graphical position the same gp how would we work out the distance obviously it's zero because he's standing at the same gp so what is the formulation 90 degrees minus 90 degrees obviously because they're together equals zero so zero times 60 is just zero nautical miles okay let's move mike away mike has just moved to 80 degrees so in other words mike's previous observation was underneath polaris and mike is now 80 degrees that he measured to Polaris. Now, you would see there I already wrote 600 nautical miles. How did I get that 600 nautical? Obviously, Polaris is at a set at the set height. It's not going to change. It has to physically be at a height because you can see it. But we measure apparent angles. That means we are subject to perspective. We see things through a three-dimensional way. Obviously, this is a two-dimensional demonstration, but it's just to explain the angle relationships. Now, how did we get those 600 nautical miles? Well, simple. We took the 90 of Polaris, or you understand the 90, because it's a right triangle, right angle triangle. We minus the 80 degrees that he measured Polaris from. What does that give us? That gives us an, a co-altitude angle of 10. So the co-altitude angle would be 10 degrees. We times that by 60 and we get 600 nautical miles. So in other words, because the co-altitude was 10, the distance from Mike to the GP of this Polaris would be 600 nautical miles. That means that Mike would now be at the 80 degree latitude. Now we do the same for 70. You see it has a, it's having an apparent altitude drop. Why is that happening? Simple, like I've been saying. Every degree is apparent altitude angle measurement. Your distance changes, thus your angle to the observation changes. Your line of sight changes to that observation. It's not physically dropping. It's all got to do with angles and perspective. Again, we worked out 90 degrees minus 70 equals 20. And this would be times 60 because it's minute of angle and equals to 1,200 nautical miles. Please do pay attention because there is a pattern here. Okay, let's move on. 1,800 nautical miles would be at 60 degrees. Now we move on to 50 degrees which would come up to 2,400 nautical miles degrees, which comes up to 3,000 nautical miles. Do you guys see the pattern happening here yet? Do you see how it's dropping in apparent altitude? Because the distance is, is increasing from the GP. So as the distance increases, the apparent altitude angle has to drop. It's a linear relationship. That's why you get the apparent drop. It's not physically dropping it's a perspective you're measuring it at 40 degrees 
which is a 40 degree angle. You cannot expect it to measure at 40 degrees and expect it to have the same angular measurement as at 80 degrees. I mean, look at the difference in distance from Polaris. Anyway, moving on. Now we have 30 degrees, which goes to 3,600 nautical miles, and 20 degrees. That comes up to 4,200, and 10 is 4,800, and eventually we get to zero, which comes up to you the maximum you can, um, which comes up to the maximum you can observe Polaris from, which is 5,400 nautical miles. That would be zero degrees. That means two Mike at zero degrees it will look like Polaris is on the ground so that means he would be looking from the equator quote unquote to Polaris in the North Pole so that distance from from uh, Mike's GP to Polaris GP is 5400 nautical miles along the surface what else have we realized through this demonstration so far well this depiction so far you see that curve happening there that curve is simply just to show it's all perspective based everything is compressing higher up because of convergence and everything is the furthest away it's starting to compress again so obviously the distance from the GP or the ground from Mike here to the star there the distance is growing and as it's growing in that distance the compression of the angle is being more apparent the same with this way as it's moving away the distance the compression in the angles is showing more so this is actually showing you angular relationships to perspective compression okay this is based on a previous video that I did as well with your field of view bubble obviously you cannot see forever and based on the maximum you can see on here would be 5400 nautical miles because obviously we stand on a 180 degree plane we don't have eyes in our back so we measure from 90 degrees which is one quadrant so how can we show that those are those angles are dropping consistently with the distance well we show with the with the view bubble this view bubble now shows Mike under Polaris with his bubble. What happens when he moves to the 80? The bubble moves with him, so the whole field of view is going to move with him. Look where it's sitting with the 80. That 80 is sitting now on his, on his circumference. This is why you have the celestial sphere. This is what you're seeing. You're literally seeing a celestial sphere because of perspective not because it's physical curving it's only perspective based moving further away he gets to 70 moving further away he gets to 60 you see how those angles are dropping with the arc because you are measuring a sky arc and notice as he's moving away that bubble is getting more and more limited to where Polaris is so now Polaris would be 20 degrees Understand? 20 degrees above the horizon from Mike. So there we go, 10 degrees. And now Polaris is on the horizon at 5,400 nautical miles because he has reached the end of the field of view bubble. Hope I've made it very clear to you why it's that way. This is the only way you can really take a presentation on perspective in orthographic view because orthographic is two-dimensional perspective as we all live in three dimensions obviously has a three-dimensional feel to it but I thought this would make it the easiest to get it to show you how it works in perspective view okay so I thought we can go on and make the bubble show you look he is looking at an 80 degree angle to Polaris so Polaris would be at this 90 degree zenith this is the Polaris um, GP and this is Mike's GP he measures a 80 degree to Polaris so how do we work this out now to know he's at his 80 degree latitude simple he measured 80 degrees so obviously he's at his 80 degree latitude 90 minus 80 equals 10 so the co-altitude angle would be 10 
So that's the co-altitude angle. And obviously, because a triangle, internal sum is always 180. So what's 90 minus 80? Uh, obviously, it's going to make 10. So there's your 10. Now we know this from this 90 from Mike to his field of view bubble that the um, maximum he can go to what show is 5,400 nautical miles so obviously to his back if you had to turn around it'll be another 5,400 nautical miles so that makes the great circle 10,800 nautical miles from left to right on the 180 degrees so it's very simple this just means you're at 80 degree latitude and the distance from your latitude to this to the Polaris would be 600 nautical miles. I think that's made it very simple to understand. Let's do another one. Now we are measuring 50 degrees. What would be his co-altitude angle? It would be 40 degrees. Why? Because 90 minus 50 equals 40. So that's your co-altitude angle. You times that by 60 because it's a minute of arc and you get your 2400 nautical miles so Mike's GP to the star, which is Polaris here, GP, 2,400 nautical miles. His field of view still goes beyond that because he can see till 5,400 nautical miles. So obviously there's more stars in the background till they've reached zero degrees. What does this show if you had to show both of them compared to each other? From Mike standing with Polaris at 50, looking at 50 and when he had looked at 80 it showed a 30 degree of angular drop. That is just a perspective angular drop, it's an apparent altitude drop, it's not physical drop, it's just following his field of view due to perspective. So Mike measured an apparent altitude angle of 80 when he was 600 nautical miles away which meant that a minute of arc was at the higher apparent altitude compared to when you moved to the 50 degree latitude which was 2400 nauticals away from Polaris. Now I'm trying to depict the linear function to you guys because if you still haven't got it that the distance and the altitude angle are linked I don't know how else I'm going to depict it. So. We've got the y-axis and we've got the x-axis. Yes, last time I made the x and the y. I'm making it this way because everybody was moaning about it. So we're going to keep it the y, we're going to keep it the x. We've got the 80 degrees, obviously. 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. I've already laid it out just to make it easier for you guys. We have a grid. You can see, based on the information we had before, you see how it compresses with the distance up to the sky arc and with distance there this is because of perspective so the distances between each thing gets apparently smaller it's not physically getting smaller it's apparently because it's just perspective so let's take a measurement yeah we measured 30 degrees what does this tell us yeah we have a y and an x yeah we know the altitude would be showing what a 30 degree altitude angle the distance would give us that distance from mike to there so what does that say it says y3 let's tell let's count together one two three so that tells you it's y3 which means on the y-axis it's 30 degrees y3 and the distance is x6 so let's count together one two three four five six six you see so six so that means it's times six so it's going to be 30 equals 300 and 3600 nautical miles i'm going to explain to you how we get these again with the reference to the y3 and x6 this is just simply to show you that we've got a linear relationship let's do it again now we measured a 70 degrees how did we get y7 x2 easy one two three four five six seven seven is 70 degrees x is one two so the distance is two and the altitude angle is seven that gives us a relationship of a thousand two hundred nautical miles to a 70 degree 70 degree altitude angle measurement 
Now let's show all the relationships from 80 to 0. y8, x1. y7, x2. y6, x3. y5, x4. y4, x5. y3, x6. y2, x7 and y0, y0, obviously because it is on 0, so it's the maximum, so it's 0. Are you understanding what is going on? Do you see the relationship here? The altitude angle decreases, the distance increases, and vice versa. So how does this, what does this tell us? Well, 80 degrees x1 would tell us the relationship is 80 degrees equals 600 nautical miles 70 equals you know exactly what we just explained to you there's a simple way we can get this to work out just to have a quick reference so you don't have to do the 90 minus 80 60 and all that it's just a quick way i'll make uh, a quick way out i put up so we can have a quicker reference frame for each latitude for instance 50 degrees, if you measure that, would be y5. Because why? Y is the altitude angle, which is 50 degrees. That means it's times 4. And what do I mean with times 4? Everything is incremented with 600 nautical miles. Because we times it by 60. So if x1 is 600, x2 will be 1200. Understand? x3, 1800. And we get to x4 so that means 600 times 4 equals 2000 north miles. so we automatically know when it comes to a 50 degree angle which would be y5 will be on the 50 degree latitude and we know we are 2400 nautical miles away from polaris let's do another one 20 degrees what is it 20 degrees looks at x2 uh, sorry 20 degrees looks at y2 so y2 is times 7 so it's 600 times 7 4200 nautical miles so to reference 20 degrees we will be 2000 uh, 4200 nautical miles away because it is 600 times 7 same with zero because you have zero and you have to times it by nine obviously because it's at the maximum and you get 5400 nautical miles I hope that made sense to you because I've been trying to make it as simple as possible to explain to you the linear relationship based on the 180 degree angle measurements. Well thank you for watching, I hope I made it really obvious to you why we see what we do. Uh, if you do not really understand what's going on, I do have other videos that I will be linking to the description box below. Thank you for watching, please don't forget to like. Just share the show and if you haven't already you want to keep up to date with more information like this please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon till next time god bless